would. And a nagging question that occurred to us is represented by a New York neighborhood, which has long been a reproach to the nation. But the South Bronx is trying to rise from the ashes. It is a battle to do so. And Ed Rabel spent last week in the battle zone. It was like the moon now, nothing but minerals. Buildings had collapsed. Their wood had been consumed and their stones had crashed down. Some walls still stood, but windows and roofs were gone, and there was nothing inside but ashes and dollops of melted glass. That is Kurt Vonnegut's description of Dresden after its destruction by American bombers in February 1945. But this is the South Bronx, February 1981, destroyed by other Americans. Life here is hard. The battle to survive is desperate. The outcome by no means certain. We wondered how Thanksgiving week would go in the vast and ugly, rubble-strewn region of New York City known as the South Bronx. Who would wish to spend Thanksgiving there? David Culver, here is our Sunday morning cover story. South Bronx. So this is in New York City. And not just South Bronx, but there was a situation in this part of New York, New York City, in the 1970s and 1980s, where vast complexes of apartment complexes and apartment buildings were getting burned down in the 70s and 80s. So blocks upon blocks of old apartment buildings were getting burned down. Landlords were abusing insurance policies and tenants were even abusing having lived in a burned out building because it would qualify them for um, applications for certain types of uh, reimbursement for loss of their possessions and fires and landlords were once again cashing in on the benefits of of having their buildings burned out and this to me is a little bit of a strange strange phenomenon that happened and I'll get right to the point I don't believe the official story of what's been told about white flight leaving the South Bronx in New York and then um, blacks and Hispanics moving in and living in poverty and burning out these buildings. It just doesn't sit right with me, but I'm not gonna... Uh, that's just my introduction here. So this this video will be a little bit difficult to make as uh, I wasn't sure how to go about making it. So the style and the presentation I can't guarantee will be great, but if you can just stick with me, I'm gonna try to piece this through piece by piece and different video clips that I make and hopefully it makes sense by the end of the video. Now before I get in to the main things I want to talk about I should say that uh, my videos are kind of premised on some of the ideas presented by Philip Drujinin in his on his channel in the last couple years where he's re-examining um, kind of a cataclysmic event that took place within the last 200 years where a lot of cities were left in ruins and they ended up getting mud flooded. The main thing I think his channel is known for is is the mud flood. And if you go to his channel, look at his most popular videos and you look at the mud flood, this one here, then you'll probably be up to speed with the things that I'm talking about. I will leave this as a link in the description below. Now there's not a lot of people covering this um, subject matter, but if you alt also go to uh, Martin Liedka's, uh YouTube channel 
and you look at some of his most popular videos, he's discussing very similar types of things. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. So that's my introduction. Okay, one more video I wanted to mention uh, is a very recent one. I think it was just put out today, and it's by Conspiracy R Us, and he made a about a 12-minute video which presents this what I think is a new concept of trees don't burn on the flat earth. Now what does he mean by that? Well, I'm gonna leave his video as a link in the description below, but he's more or less taking a look at some of these old panoramic images of cityscapes and he's noticing that amongst the ruins of these great fires, some of these historical great fires at the beginning of the 20th century and even a little bit before, um, that for some reason the trees in the scenery are not getting singed or burnt and they're still intact even though buildings are completely destroyed. Uh, I could speculate on an answer to that but um, I'm getting away from the subject I want to talk about. I'll try to get a clip and here's just one screenshot of the kinds of things he was talking about in his video. He probably says it better than I do but again there's trees you know fully intact and remaining even bushes not in this particular screenshot and yet there was a historical fire that destroyed everything so what's going on again uh, take a look at that video it's kind of similar to the kinds of things I'd like to talk about today regarding the South Bronx okay and, and one last disclaimer and that's that the ideas I presented my video are completely my own and they don't necessarily reflect the things of the other channels I just mentioned okay so to bring you up to speed uh, with the South Bronx I'm just gonna read a little bit of this uh, internet news article well, it's not really news it's more like history and uh, hopefully it'll bring you up to speed with what I'm talking about so this is sort of like the official story here why the Bronx really burned I'm just gonna read it game two of the 1977 baseball World Series was a bit of a blowout with the Los Angeles Dodgers jumping to an early lead and eventually beating the New York Yankees 6-1. While the action on the field may not have captured its attention, the audience watching from home was witness to a piece of broadcasting history. A few hours before the first pitch, a large fire had broken out in an abandoned school near Yankee Stadium. As flames engulfed the building, not a fire truck in sight. Legend has it that Howard Cassell uttered one of the most memorable phrases. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The Bronx is burning. It's a powerful and enduring collective memory, and it almost doesn't matter that Cassell never actually uttered those words. It was the nation's glimpse into a time when the Bronx and many other parts of New York City were decimated by fire. Between the 1970, or excuse me, between 1970 and 1980, seven census tracts in the Bronx lost more than 97 percent of their buildings to fire and abandonment. I guess a tract, so the quantity, uh, seven census tracts, so it's like probably like a, a region or a district were lost to fire. So the whole city's getting burned down and there's a lot of social scientific kind of academic explanations as to why this had happened some people blaming it on the fact that landlords couldn't sell um, their investments into these properties and that they were making uh, good on the insurance money and you know combined with the behavior of the tenants in these areas who were also making claims for lost possession and fires and things like that I kinda mentioned this already but this is the official story well I'm gonna tell you bluntly so you understand my point I think something else was going on. This is a very funny story, and knowing what we know about mud flood, the history of these buildings may go back to a pre-bombed out, pre-burnt, pre-flooded era. So these might go even as far back as the 1860s. I can't put a date on it, even though these buildings don't look that old. But um, I'm going to start looking at some pictures. Okay, so these are all images that I've taken off of other YouTube videos on the Bronx or videos I found on Google Images. And 
this is an important image because it's going to sort of prove a point I want to make. So this is a street scene and you can see that in the street scene there's signs of life. Not only are there people here but there are things that kind of relate to what you would find in a city. So you have parking meters and you have old signs and you know well basically signs and things that basically show that people live here. These buildings have curtains and there's signs of life and, and recent activity. Well, that might seem obvious. Why am I even saying that? Well, hopefully that'll be more obvious as I continue on here. Okay, so this is from a video, 1981 Special Report, South Bronx. Here's some, it's not the main point of my, my video, but here's some proof of like mud flood. You've got these basement windows that seem to go into the ground. Right, maybe here you've got these, this is a good good indication of you know how things looked. Get this tree growing out here. Here's some good examples of basement windows, kind of at a strange low level. That's getting away from the things I want to talk about, but yeah, there certainly are evidence of mud flood in some of these images. But the thing I want to uh, point out is that I showed you the first picture of the street scene with lots of signage and signs of life and activity. I want to mention that in a lot of these historical photos of the South Bronx, these signs of life are curiously absent from the pictures. So, you know, if you see a, an image like this, you might expect that there might be like a no parking sign here or, you know, maybe even the name of the property development company that owns this this building or you know some type of sign or name or even a street number on this particular building but please notice how a lot of these images that I will show are absent of signage there's just no signs moreover there's not a lot of street signs so whether the official story is true that all these buildings were burnt out doesn't matter my point is that like they don't really have signs of life in them like they don't have the look that somebody has recently lived in them that's really what I'm trying to say <clears throat> there was a movie that was made in the South Bronx with Paul Newman so it's possible that some of these images are actually taken from the movie it doesn't really matter because it's still showing the South Bronx Jimmy Carter actually went to Charlotte Street on a United Nations visit, which I suppose has a big building in New York. So I guess he was here and he was kind of reporting on what was going on in the South Bronx. But look, I, you got these mud flood era, or mud flood looking windows, but does it look like somebody has recently lived in these, you know, within the last couple decades? So this is like 1980. Does it look like people just abandoned these 10 or 20 years earlier? I just think that there's no signs of life in these. No signs, no... I don't think anybody has ever lived in these buildings. They talk about a white flight where the middle class and upper class whites lived in these. I don't know, these don't look like anybody's ever lived in them since, you know, maybe the 1880s or something. These are taken from the video clips. But again, these don't just look like they've been abandoned within the last <coughs> 20 years. They look like nobody's inhabited them for forever. They're bricked up. There's no signs, no no parking signs, there's no street signs. Yes, people pillage and take things. You know, you could say, oh, maybe they took the street sign because it had scrap metal value. Okay, fine. Why didn't they take the, uh, you know, the fire escape too? That's metal. That's steel looks like no street sign was ever put up. Did anybody ever inhabit this? Okay, so I guess I'm recording up. So yeah, does it look like anybody has lived in these buildings in, in recent memory? You know, lots of buildings. Lots of buildings. There's no no parking signs, no no signs of life. And I tried to look it up. 
supposedly white flight, like white communities that lived in these areas and then left. And I guess that's as far back as the 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s. Well, I don't find a lot of South Bronx, South Bronx images that you can search on Google Images that show, never mind white people, but anybody living in these particular buildings in that time. I stand to be corrected. If you can find a photo gallery of people inhabiting these old buildings and could even match them up to the ones I'm showing, then show me. Maybe I stand to be corrected, but I, I tend to think that nobody's ever lived in these. They've been abandoned, not for the last 10 years, 20 years at this point in 1980. They've been abandoned for 100 years. Nobody has ever lived in these. That's what I'm saying. That's what it looks like to me. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Well, there is signs of, like, maybe flat roofing. It is possible. Not all of these images are taken from the same site. Here they are destroying an old building. You know, is there, where's the wallpaper? Where's the, you know, fixtures that nobody bothered to remove? Where, where are they? Well, maybe it's there. I don't know. just doesn't look like somebody's lived here. There's no sign that people just got up and left. They didn't la leave anything behind. I don't care if it was burned out. There's nothing to show. I'm browbeating. I know. I'm being pushy with my ideas. Like even here's mud flood. In a lot of places in New York or some of these old cities, they'll show these like basement level, first story level entrances having been dug out and things. Maybe this was converted into a an entrance here. I'm not sure. <coughs> but there's just nothing to indicate that you know. There's no flower boxes. There's no railings. There's no awnings over the window, there's no house numbers. You might say, oh, well, you know, it was poor people that lived here, but no, no, I mean, like, supposedly there was white communities, middle class and upper class, that lived in these 20 years prior to this image, so, it's, but it doesn't look like that. This is obviously from a movie. You know, you do have paved roads. You do have, you know, street lights. But again, there's... The frontage on these are mysteriously blank. They're, they're absent. There's no... There's no signs or... Are you going to tell me that somebody... Was this a church that people were using recently? Was this ever in good shape within the last 200 years? What church is this? Was And was this church ever in a good state within recent or photographic memory? There is a bit of a trend on, on these old buildings where a lot of the a lot of the first story windows are concrete blocked. I don't know if it's what I'm talking about in this case as to what we're seeing, but this looks like concrete block. It's all blocked up. So is it possible that maybe somebody 150, 200 years ago recognize the proper property as 
uh, a future potential for development and rental income and maybe went to the trouble of protecting their asset by bricking it up. I mean somebody went to the trouble to protect it at some point. Not just boarding up the windows but actually blocking it up. So finally went ahead and did that. When did that happen? And then like when was this building used? Sure, it is possible that heavy construction equipment can demolish large portions of of brown brown sites they call them I think okay here's a good point not only are there no signs on these buildings you know like Bob's tire or you know like liquor store you, you don't see that on any of these buildings even the commercial buildings you don't see that but nobody has a lawn there's no there's no grass there's no grass growing like okay so if somebody abandoned these properties 20 years before supposing this is 1980 and people abandoned this back in 1960 do you think maybe there'd be some green space here and there like somebody's kept the lawn going it's like nothing. It it just looks like nobody has ever inhabited this place, period. It was never inhabited the last 200 years, 150 years. Like, like if you have a building and say somebody lived in this 20 years before, let's just use this exact building then maybe you might put up like like a green chain link fence just to sort of fence off the area or you know maybe a pool or something like that something to make the place nice for your tenants a little garden a little bit of landscaping no does this look like landscaping i mean if this was used within the last 20, 30 years, wouldn't there be some kind of remnant of landscaping or a chain link fence or a shed? I see none of that. This might have been from that Apache movie with Paul Newman. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, some good examples of like mud flood type of situation. These might have been inhabited. They've got windows. They've got different color curtains. So might be people living in these ones. There's a train going by. This is a good example. It doesn't look like anybody's lived in these recently. Okay, there is kind of a sign here, but there's no there's no signs. There's no do not park here. No signs. No property management company names, nothing. And somebody's gone to the trouble once again of concrete blocking these up. Now, concrete blocking up a window, that's that's semi-permanent. I mean, if you're going to concrete block up a window, I mean window upon window, then you know you're not going to be using it for a while. So did the original person who us usurped title to these buildings know that these weren't going to be used? So let's let's block these up. Here's the inside of one. I don't know if these are the same buildings. I will leave the link in the description below for the YouTube videos that I got these images from. And they're actually video shots. They're not just still images. I mean, even if this was burned out, wouldn't you still have, like, a few fixtures that remain? You know, even the window frame. This doesn't look just burned out. This looks like they're ancient ruins, practically.
Again, to me this just doesn't look like it has any signs of recent life or activity within the last 20-30 years. I don't think anybody's lived in these. I was trying to look at some of the trees to see if they were in kind of inconvenient places that would show that maybe something has grown up in an inconvenient spot that would be complete proof that, yeah, certainly nobody would have lived there for a long time because there's a big tall tree growing in front. I don't quite see that. I was hoping to find something like that to better substantiate my argument. No lawn chairs, you know? No lawn chairs. No planted pots. Definitely some mud float going on here. These were some really good shots. This is actually, you have to see the original video for this one because it really pans through and this entire area is a wasteland not looking like anything was here in the recent past you know there's no no billboards don't you see billboards even today, even if it's in a poor area? You still see a billboard advertising something. Even in the 80s, 70s, 50s, 60s, they still would have had billboards. There's no remnant of any billboards. There's no signage. And the pathways are not... There's no clear pathway, no clear car driveway or entrance or guardrails or handrails or landscaping. There's nothing. I don't think anybody has ever lived here in the last 100, 250 years. These are some Google images I found. And I'm back to the beginning again. Okay, so thanks for watching my video. I tend to browbeat. I'm pushy with my approach. Try to ignore the way I talk. I know that's not for everybody, but thanks for watching. Have a good day.